I would say it starts with the drums that you hear in Jackson Square in the New Orleans area. And when we moved from New Orleans to San Diego, California on a short stint, I mean extremely short, we were close to a place called Balboa Park and there would be the hand drums out there. I would say my earliest recollections of music was going to the park and hearing those musicians doing the rhythms. Kimball School, kindergarten, I stand up and I say, I'm going to be a guitarist. And my teacher goes, wait, what? I said, yeah, I'm going to be a guitarist. And she's like, wow, how can you say that? Can you play guitar? And I'm like, not yet, but I will. And even then I knew, somehow I just knew that I was going to do something on guitar. I've had a love affair with the guitar. Even when I couldn't play it, I was in love with it. And when the grandkids would tell my grandfather, you know, granddaddy, I want this, granddaddy, I want that. And then my grandmother would say what she needed as he's going to the store. Well, Lamar, I need this, Lamar, I need that. Well, I listened to that. And grandma always got what she needed. So I said, well, grandpa, I really need a guitar. And that's, I got the, you know, the Roy Rogers plastic guitars. And a lot of people would want to say, Joe's a natural. And I think there is a God-given talent there uh, that I possess. But I spent lots of hours honing that skill and singing in a room. I mean, there was a time where as a kid, as a teenager, if I did less than six hours a day of practice, I let myself down. So I'm working skills, working arpeggios, and just going, you know, constantly. My earlier influences were like the, uh, the black gospel guitars that were coming and the traveling bands and playing. Uh, hearing them play and hearing the riffs from them. And then my parents were always like spinning, uh, which is a, a, a real contrast of what I was gravitating to. So I used to have to sneak to listen to the radio because my parents were Pentecostal. So certain songs were considered a sin at that time. And so I had to be very careful how I, what I listened to and where I listened to it at. I went to spend the summer with my grandparents in Picayune, and my uncle played uh, Jimi Hendrix, um, Purple Haze, on the record player. And my whole world completely changed from that moment on. I used to climb on top of the barn and play for the cattle and pretend they were people. And uh, I really did. I would do that as a kid. I'd get on top of the barn and play these cattle. And they'd be grazing and it would be funny because I'd end the song and they'd all just look up like and go back to eating again. And so that really helped me when you're playing for diners and places that don't really care. Here in blues, I just gravitated to it naturally. As a matter of fact, the first song I wrote was a blues song. I played it for my mom and uh, I, I wrote this song and uh, Matt looked at my mom and said, Aunt Jerry, I believe we got a blues man on our hands. And my mom laughed. She said, we'll see. Uh, I was never really confident in myself as a singer uh, coming up younger. And so I would always look for lead singers to be in bands. And then it just became as a necessity because so many lead singers would not show up either for the studio time to record or in certain lineups. There'd just be lead singer issues. So I kind of by default would sing a little bit here and there. And then when I, uh, I got more confident in my singing, I'd sing in the 90s. By, by the time the 90s, 90s hit, I said, yeah, I can sing. When COVID hit, we were in Memphis and the guy that was acting as our manager had the foresight to see this was gonna get bad. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be like everything else. You know, I said, this is going to pass. This is nothing. It's overhyped. Don't worry about it. And we were spending three days in Memphis. And I'm thinking, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. It, it stopped everything except for the drive to want to play and the writing. I wrote all through COVID. As, as a matter of fact, I did about three albums worth of material. But I have to be honest with you, as bad as COVID was, and it, it was bad. I'm not downplaying it. it was, it's horrific. I did some of the best deals of my life. I did, like, a, I got a three album deal out of it. The blues is alive and well in St. Louis. The blues is alive and well in Kansas City. 
The blues is alive and well in Memphis, and the blues is alive and well in Chicago. In my opinion, where I'm at, centrally located, it's a great area of blues. So I don't feel it's a drawback to jump up there and play originals as opposed to jumping on the bandwagon and be a cover band. Some guys are good at it. I'm just not that guy. I'm not a good cover band guy at all. As a matter of fact, you would pay me money to play some of these songs like them. I call my music house, rock, and gospel blues. So I'm doing regular blues and gospel blues, and it's house rock, and we're going to rock the house. When we show up, you're going to know we've been there. You're going to enjoy yourself. We're going to play music that's going to make you want to get up and dance. And uh, But we're also going to you know, we're going to bring some of our originals to you and also share a deeper aspect of why I play my music.